So I want to show something that's interesting, and this is potentially the downside of a long-term ketogenic diet. And again, there are many benefits to a ketogenic diet. We acknowledge that clearly. I acknowledge that clearly. Um, but I want to show you guys what we might consider something like uh, physiologic insulin resistance glucose sparing looks like. And this can happen in someone, this is in someone who's been doing a ketogenic diet for many years. I believe five years, this person, right? Yes. Yeah. So zero carbs for about five years. Okay. Um, and as he pulls up the data, basically what we see is with each, it, it doesn't occur in the first year of a zero diet carbohydrate or zero carbohydrate diet. But after you hit, you know, year one, two, three, that fasting glucose just slowly starts to creep up. And so you can see this person, their fasting glucose is about 120. And this is after five years of being in strict, strict ketosis. So there's no, there's very little variability, you know, there's no carbs in the diet. So there's no swings in the glucose, but the whole baseline is much higher. And as we talked about, we like to see a fasting glucose below 90. So to me, this is concerning. Um, like you said, this is called physiological insulin resistance or adaptive glucose sparing. This is different than pathological insulin resistance that's occurring in diabetes. But what's happening is that the muscles start to go into glucose refusal mode and they really only want fat and they really only want ketones because that's what it's now learned is the only fuel source coming in. But we do have glucose sensitive organs. So the body starts to compensate with this by creating more endogenous glucose. So the liver is creating glucose to make sure there's always some available because it has learned that there is never going to be any glucose coming in from food. And like you said, you can see this all the time. It's well documented on these false alarms with the OGTTs. So these people who are very low carbohydrate, when they do an OGTT and they have 75 grams of glucose all of a sudden, it shocks the system and they will definitely be labeled as a diabetic. I've had many people come to me who are like, I got diagnosed with gestational diabetes because I failed an OGTT. And then I asked, well, were you on a very low carbohydrate diet? And they're like, yeah. And you know, nobody brought this to their attention. They thought they had gestational diabetes. They most likely didn't. You know, there's no way to prove that in retrospect. But we do some tests to see what their insulin sensitivity is, to see what their glucose tolerance is. And like you said, about three days of eating about 100, 150 grams of carbohydrates for those three days in a row, and then that goes back to normal. So that does indicate that this is a temporary problem, temporary insulin resistance. So we don't know, it's a little controversial of if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but like you said, to me, this indicates metabolic inflexibility, which is, is not the goal of any of this. So if our body now is inflexible to using glucose and it takes three days to retrain it how to use glucose, that concerns me a little bit. And you know, for the most part, all of the research that's been done on, you know, fasting glucose being high and showing it associated with cardiovascular disease and all these other health outcomes, they're not usually accounting for insulin. I went back and looked and they're, you know, they're controlling for BMI, they're controlling for smoking, they're controlling for triglycerides, all these other factors, but very few of them control for insulin. So there is the question of, you know, if you're following a ketogenic diet and your fasting glucose is high, really high, 120 high, and your insulin is really low, you know, does that have the same detriment? I'm definitely concerned about it. I don't think this is physiologically normal to be without carbs for that long. I don't think it's evolutionarily probably what was happening. You know, most likely there was times of honey and times of fruit or carbs in the summer, and we most likely cycled between high, a higher carbohydrate, lower carbohydrate. So it concerns me from a metabolic flexibility standpoint, but um, it's up for debate. I don't like seeing it. And then when people are concerned about it and they want to bring that down, we incorporate some carbohydrates into their diet. And at first they're going to have massive glucose spikes and it's going to freak them out and it's going to make them even more anti-carb because they see this huge response as their body is relearning. But if we do it enough, th that fasting glucose goes down fairly quickly within weeks. So it's an interesting phenomenon. Um, I don't know how you feel about it from a metabolic health standpoint, but it concerns me.